The 2019 FINA World Championships take place in South Korea in July, and one man looking to make a big impact there will be Joseph Schooling. When you truly love something, you can't really describe it. I love the feeling of being in the water. I love practice. I love seeing my buddies. Joseph competes in freestyle, butterfly and medley events. His speciality is the butterfly and he's the reigning Olympic champion in the 100 meters fly. The 23-year-old hails from Singapore but currently lives and trains in America. He's based at the University of Texas in Austin where he's been part of an all-conquering Longhorns swim team. Coming here and training with guys that are always ready to go at it and practice, it's amazing. I mean, they push you to be better, and in turn, you push them to be better also. Everyone here wants to be the best. It's nice to be immersed in that mentality. Two-time US Olympic coach Eddie Reese presides over the Longhorns swimming program. He's seen his team take the national collegiate title four years in a row, all since a certain Joe Schooling turned up here. Reese had scouted schooling from a young age, and he knew how valuable he would be to the Longhorns. He can swim any stroke and be top five or six in the country. So he is amazingly valuable as a relay swimmer in individual events. He hates to lose, so he didn't get beat very much. He had it as an eighth grader. And it just, it's something all the books and the experts tell us you're born with. As a child, Joe was pushed into the sport, not as a hobby, but for his own safety and for his parents' peace of mind. My dad almost drowned a couple times as a kid. And uh, Singapore is surrounded by water. And that's exactly why my dad put me in water safety classes. We never expected me to actually want to be a professional swimmer or go to the Olympics. It kind of just happened. So that was pretty cool. Joe's instant love for the sport turned into an obsession. As a 12-year-old, he was left starstruck when Michael Phelps turned up at his swim club only months before the Beijing Olympics. They did their training camp at the country club I train at. And so that was the first time I met Michael, but 2012 was actually the first time I kind of spoke to him and I could, you know, I was a bit more mature than I was in 2008, could actually hold a conversation. Uh, Michael's amazing, super sweet guy. Um, you know, when he gets in the pool, he just does his own thing. When he gets out, it's like, all right, that's it for swimming for now. Take your mind off it, come back, refocus. At the 2016 Olympics in Rio, Joe lined up against his childhood hero, Michael Phelps, in the final of the 100 meters butterfly. For Joe, it was a thrilling moment. Could he really beat Phelps, the most decorated Olympian of all time? It was Phelps' last individual race at the Olympics. Whenever you got Michael next to you, obviously your game needs to be elevated uh, one or two levels or even more. And so having Michael next to me really forces me to focus, um, be more accountable to myself, make sure I'm looking at what I'm doing, take things more seriously. Unfazed by Phelps and the stacked field, Joe swam the race of his life. He claimed victory in a time of 50.39 seconds, breaking Phelps' Olympic record. It was Singapore's first ever gold medal at the Games. I just felt an overwhelming sense of pride. Uh, very proud, very thankful for my parents to have put me in a position to be in that spot. And so, you know, it's just like, it's like a million and one things going through your mind and you, re you really don't know what to think. Already a star in Singapore prior to Olympic gold, Joe had announced himself to the wider world. And with that came its own set of problems. When a fellow Texas student noticed that she'd ignored the newly crowned Olympic champ on a popular mobile dating app, she tweeted her mistake to the world and the story went viral. I kind of try not to think about that, really. 
It's, it's just one of those funny things where you look back on it and you see what happened. But, you know, uh, I almost forgot about it until you brought it up. Thanks. <laughs> but yeah, it was, just, it was just a good laugh. Uh, my mom didn't think it was too funny, but uh, me and my dad thought thought it was pretty hilarious. So the guy, the guys got a got, got the guys got a good laugh out of that. But mom, mom certainly wasn't pleased at all. After four years as a Longhorn, Joe will soon be able to put the books down for good as he graduates with a degree in economics. I'm actually really excited for it. Um, school, school takes up a lot of time and energy from your day, and if you have to mix in school with practice sometimes, it, you know, it, it gives you gives you a couple pretty rough days. And so now that I'm done with school, I can actually focus fully on practice. You don't have to worry about homework, papers, exams. Um, all I, my only job right now is to take care of my body and take care of things in the pool. And that, that's awesome. Joe is training hard, and he's looking forward to this year's World Championships in South Korea. I have two big meets. I have World Champs in Korea in July, and then I have the Sea Games uh, in November or December leading up to the Olympics in 2020. And so right now, this next year is going to go by pretty quickly. And before you know it, I'll, I'm going to be hopping on that flight to Tokyo, hopefully, you know, if I make it. We still have a lot of work to do this year and not as much time. And so I'm excited of kind of getting back in that grind. Eddie Reese believes that the best of Joe is yet to come and he's confident he can win Olympic gold again in 2020. Without a doubt, he can defend that title and I would really like to see him broaden the number of events he really cares about. Because he's a good 100 freestyler, good 200 freestyler, and he may be the best 200 flyer out there. He just hadn't had to swim it, hadn't needed to swim it. Age 23, Joe has many years left in the pool and he'll be hoping to win his first World Championship title this year. It's crunch time. You know, every practice matters. Everything you do outside of practice matters. It honestly just balls down to how good you want to be. If you want to be great, you want to be the best, then you got to be the best outside the pool also and take care of your priorities so you can be the best in the pool. Thank you.